we have made it to week 10! I was going to get party poppers, but I couldn't find any, so imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been amazing, isn't it? It's been a nice little journey, isn't it? But, but the story has not finished just yet. No. We have got to find out a bit later what has happened. Is it the ending or is it the beginning? <laughs> it's really, really good. I have had a sneak preview this week, which is good. So what have we got coming out? Have we got some songs? We have got songs. Now I'm thinking of doing crazy today. Sounds good. We'll do that one. And we've got, we've got memory verse. Oh! Oh! Stop press. We had an email today, Bethan, mm -hmm. from a superman. A superman? A superman called Jane. <laughs> and she wants us to shout out her grandchildren because they think she is the coolest grand in the world. Is she the coolest grand in the world? She might well be. Hmm. So, Yoshi. And Sophie, that's a really cool name, Sophie, because of the story. And Benny as well. So thank you so much for loving what we've been doing, which has been brilliant. Um, anything else going on? Um, we've got a story today. We? we have got a Bible story. Uh, it's all about seeds today. Seeds. Yes. Like sunflower seeds. seeds. Like sunflower seeds. Yes. But what kind of useful than sunflower seeds? Sunflowers are very pretty, but they're useful. I suppose you can eat some flowers. Anyway, shall we pray? Yes. Let's pray. Number one, number two, and number three. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for light bringers. Thank you, God, that we've had such a blast over these last 10 weeks. God, I pray that the stories that we tell today would sink deep into our hearts and would help us to be light bringers too. Lord, show us how we can tell people about Jesus. Aww. Let's do it. Hello, this week's game is a race to put on a pair of tights whilst wearing washing up gloves. Ready, steady, go.
and in the strength of his might. Ephesians 6 verse 10. I guess it's my turn then to tell you my story. So I became a Christian. I gave my heart to Jesus first when I was just 11 years old. That's a long, long, long time ago, I know. But I was brought up with parents who loved Jesus and I was taken to church from, well, before I was born. So I knew all about Jesus the whole of my life. When I was 11, I went off to a children's camp and there some guy, I guess, just like what I'm doing now, explained to me all about how Jesus loved me for who I am. And do you know, something clicked inside my heart. And I said to Jesus, Jesus, I want to follow you. Well, as a teenager, yeah, I wasn't a very good Christian. And, and you'll see a, a, a kind of theme that's been going through a lot of the stories. Um, that as a teenager, it's really hard to follow Jesus because, well, in this country, in the UK, lots of people as teenagers don't follow Jesus and that can be very, very hard. So when I was 17 years old, again, I was at another Christian camp and again, something clicked inside my heart and made me kind of think, well, you know, I really need to follow Jesus. Am I going to follow Jesus? totally sold out or am I just gonna kind of follow my friends and people that don't really follow Jesus and, and for me I really wanted to follow Jesus so I did and you know I can't say life has been all easy and straightforward because that would be lying because sometimes some really hard things do happen again lots of the leaders that have been on Lightbringers have said similar things but one thing I do know is that Jesus has been with me the whole of the time. I, you know, I would love any of you guys watching that don't know Jesus to find that for yourself too. So go for it and be a light bringer. Crazy about you, God. I wanna sing your praises every day. I'm crazy about you, God. I'm gonna give you every part of me. I'm crazy about you, God. I wanna sing your praises every day. I'm crazy about you, God. I'm gonna give you every part of me. He is for crazy That is plain to see Ah, I'm raving bananas As Jesus died for me Hey, I'm absolutely bonkers Cause Jesus' love is so great See, I'm zooming losing me Most delicious thing
story today. So have you ever planted seeds before? Some of you may have planted a garden or watched your parents or grandparents plant a garden. There is a lot of work involved in the planting and caring for a garden. You'll need a shovel to break up the ground and a rake to remove the rocks and keep the soil smooth. You need to chop down the weeds that might try to take over your garden. You'll probably need some fertiliser, and unless it rains a lot, you'll need a hose to water your garden. Oh, I almost forgot. The most important thing that you will need is the seed. You can't have a garden without seeds. Now we have everything we need to produce a great crop of fruit and vegetables. One day, Jesus told a story about a farmer who planted some seeds. As he scattered the seed in his field, some of them fell out onto the footpath and the birds ate them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground. The seeds sprouted, but they wilted and died under the hot sun because they didn't have deep roots. Some of the seeds fell in areas where there were lots of weeds, and the weeds choked out the young plants. But some of the seed fell on good, fertile soil, and that seed grew and produced a wonderful crop. Do you think Jesus was really trying to teach people how to plant a garden? No. The story has a much deeper meaning. In Jesus' story, the seed represents the word of God, and the soil represents the people who hear the word. Many times people hear the word of God, but they don't understand it. They don't take it in. That is like the seed on the footpath. The devil comes and takes away the seed that has been planted in their heart before it has the opportunity to grow in their life. The seed that fell on the rocky soil represents those who hear the word and receive it with great joy. But when the newness wears off and the excitement fades, they drift away because they don't have deep roots. The seed that fell among the weeds represent people who hear God's word and believe what it says. But soon the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the desire to get more stuff. If seed is planted in a bunch of weeds, the weeds will soon take over. A person who hears God's word, tries to understand what it says and puts it into practice in their daily life is like the good soil. In good soil, the seed takes root and grows stronger and stronger. That is the kind of soil that Jesus wants us to be. Okay, so right now we are gonna play a short little game called Two Truths and a Lie. So I've come up with two truths about myself and then also a lie. And Steve, who is off to the side, is going to try to guess what the lie is. So, are you ready? Uh, am I going to know if you're telling the truth? Trust. Ah, uh, faith. Faith. You have to be a good detective. Okay, so. I've been to a Broadway show in New York. I'm American. And I've been to Brazil. Two of those are true and one of those is a lie. And I've given you a hint with one of them. Well, you are clearly American. Yes. And I know that you've been to Brazil. Oh, do you know? Yes, because you did an assembly about it. Oh, I did. I forgot about that. <laughs> so it's got to be, I don't think you've ever been to New York, to Broadway. And that is correct. The only Broadway show I've seen has been in London. But that's not Broadway. That's okay, West but... End. 
the only West End, the only musical that I've seen has been in London, like in like a official Sweet. capacity. Sweet. What's an yeah. official capacity? <laughs> well, like I've been to like student productions and uh, those types of things. I like professional. Uh, yeah, like professional. This could go on forever. To grow stronger, we need to be like a good detective and uncover lies and false things that we've been believing about ourselves. These are things that are opposite to what God says about you. When you've uncovered a lie, try and find a Bible verse that says the truth. You can use previous memory verses or different Bible verses that we've talked about in other Lightbringer episodes. And you can say this every day until you are certain that you know the truth. And sometimes it can take quite a long time, maybe even one or two months, but it's worth it. And then shortly after lunch, they were there. Her mum and dad were there. Sophie jumped off her chair, rushed across the room and hugged her parents. Where have you been? Last night you said you wouldn't be long. Mum smiled. We've only been a few hours, Soph, but we wanted the house to be perfect for you. Sophie could see the excitement on her parents' faces. Mr Dundenter was looking at her with that big grin. And are you ready to go? asked Dad. Oh yes, answered Sophie. Don't you need to pack? Nope, responded Sophie. I've got all that I need and I've left the things that I don't need. She smiled at Mr Dundenter. And with that, she bounded up the stairs, picked up her suitcase and the key and ran back down. Dad, please can you get the metal box from my room? Even Sophie knew when something was rather too big for her to carry. Ah, oh, the box, Mum exclaimed. You know, you haven't even begun to see what that box can do. Sophie looked confused. Store stuff? Was all Sophie could manage. Mum giggled. Later, I'll show you what happens when you turn the key the other way. And with a big hug from Mr Dundenter, Sophie grabbed her bag and began to walk towards the door. See you later, Dundenter, called Dad as he carried the box and followed Sophie and Mum to the car. It was only when Sophie reached the door that she remembered that she hadn't said goodbye to everyone else. She wasn't going far and didn't want to make too much of it, so she shouted, Bye Stacy, bye Kevin, bye Cook! But she knew she would have to say a special goodbye to one particular person who, for all his bravery and loyalty and friendship, she still thought was a little crazy. But he was nowhere to be found. Why wasn't he here to say goodbye? Mum didn't want to wait any longer. She took Sophie's hand. But Mum! began Sophie, but she knew it was no good. He was nowhere to be seen. And so, her sad Sophie opened the door and turned once more to the house and shouted, Bye Thomas, see you very soon. Yep, very, very soon, came Thomas's voice from behind. She spun around and there he stood, in the street. And he was surrounded by, would you believe it? suitcases. I'm coming too, Soph. Your mum and dad said I could come live with you guys. How cool is that? Sophie was so excited. She ran and hugged him and wouldn't let go until Thomas, with slightly squeezed voice, whispered, you're definitely not going to kiss me, right? She stepped back laughing, definitely not. And later that day, after they'd been shown their new bedrooms and had unpacked and Sophie had put the box in a special place, Sophie said, isn't this wonderful, Thomas? He was happy too, she could tell. But then Thomas's face changed and he looked at Sophie and was very serious. But don't you feel just a little bit sad, Soph? Doesn't it mean that our adventures are all over now? It's lovely to have a nice home and your parents are the best, but don't you think it might be, well, well, just a little bit boring? Dad overheard and laughed out loud. Thomas and Sophie, you better come with me. Dad walked them outside to what looked like a shed. But as they got closer, Sophie could hear the whirring of, well, she didn't know what. It sounded like a hamster running around in his wheel. Is it a secret pet shop? Thought Sophie. That would be cool. But when they went inside, the whirring was not hamsters. It was computers. Computers everywhere. 
and giant screens and maps covering the walls, and maps marked with gloom and maps marked with God. There was clearly a lot more God than gloom. It was very cool. It's all a bit old, this technology now, he explained Dad. We were prisoners for quite a while, but it still works. As they looked at the screen more closely, they could see people stood in front of the gloom in different places all over the world. In some pictures, the gloom were running, and in others, the places were covered with God, with very little darkness. Mama joined them as Dad continued. And this is where you'll work, both of you, for you are light bringers. Your job is simple. Wherever you are, whatever you do, you bring light. And you bring light by showing people who they are in God. God didn't set you free and teach you how to be truly who you are in Him for you to sit around getting bored. There's work to do. Others to set free. Others who don't know who God made them to be yet. People of all ages who need to understand that they are created to be amazing. That's what you get to do. All over the world you bring light. And there will be times when you'll face the gloom again, but you'll grow strong and you'll know the truth that God made you and you're so, so special. And the darkness will always be afraid of you. And people who are sad and feel as if they're surrounded by darkness will see the light because you will bring the light. So what do you think? And Thomas and Sophie looked at each other. They looked around the room. They looked at mum. They looked at dad. They looked at each other and said the only thing that came to mind, wow. And there, we'll leave Sophie and Thomas for now. But this, of course, is not the end of the adventure, but simply the beginning. The Lightbringers are about to go international. Yeah! <laughs> So Nathan, mm -hmm. that's amazing. But question for you. Yeah. Do you feel special? I am special. Well, I know you're special, but do you feel special? Yeah, because God says his Holy Spirit lives inside me. He has made me to do good things. I can always come to God and talk with him. Yeah, that's good. And I can do things I find hard because God gives me strength and helps me. So that makes you special. Yeah. Exactly. So, do you feel safe? Oh, that's a really good question. Do I feel safe? Well, I know that I am safe mm -hmm. because I'm not guilty or bad because God has forgiven everything that I've ever done, said, or thought, which is really good. So, that's part of being safe, isn't it? Nothing can come between God and me. He will finish the good work that He started in each of us. That includes me. So, that makes me safe. And I'm safe with Jesus, and I'm in God. And I'm a child of God, and I am safe from evil. So, you know you're special. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you're special? I know I'm safe, you know you're safe. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you're safe? What about accepted? accepted? Do you know that you're accepted? Yes. Well, he says that I'm his child. Uh -huh. Um, and Jesus chose me to be his friend. That's true. I'm a saint. Woohoo, Saint Bethan. Let me yes, just polish saint that halo. Bethan. A special person yep. set aside by God. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I have been forgiven for all the things I've done wrong. Mm. God wants all of us to walk in these truths and speak them over our lives every day. Like the seeds we read about earlier, we need to allow God's word to take root in our hearts. For some of us, it's easy to do this, but for some of us, it's harder because of the negative words which have been spoken in our lives. Yeah, we can forget about those things. That's what the story's all about, isn't it? Those gloom, and we can send them back in. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, come on! <laughs> Shall we pray together? Yes. Lord, I thank you that now I'm your child. I really am special, safe and accepted. Help me to walk in these truths 
every day. Amen. Amen. That's fair, isn't it? Help me to walk in those truths. And that's what Lightbring has been all about. The truth that Jesus loves us. He's accepted us. And he's got such a big plan for us. So I hope that you have enjoyed these last 10 weeks. But remember, that's not all. Because next week, there's a very special episode that we're putting together, which is a light bringers trail, which is going to teach us some more about how we can put these truths that we've been talking about into everyday practice. So come back next week, click on that link next week, because that will be there as well. It's been fab 10 weeks of light bringers, and we are done. And what a fantastic story! Light bringers! Bye! <laughs>